first of all thanks hcl technologies for inviting me here hcl tech i think this is a this is a very interesting and important topic so as as parag laid out we are going to talk about you know what is what is happening from a frontline worker perspective some of the challenges they have seen in the in the recent times what's the role of technology to ensure that these frontline workers get the experience that they deserve so that they can serve and and customers as well and then we will also explore some of specific use cases in in some industries and in some specific context i probably have an easier job because i am going to ask lot of questions to rakshit and drew and they are they are going to answer around okay what has been their experience in this and then i will add my own perspectives based on our our research in this so if you move ahead now i guess when we when we started planning for this webinar i think um, one of the questions that that came to my mind is it's it's almost it's of course important but at the same time i felt a bit uneasy and and it's almost unfortunate that that we have to talk about why frontline workers are important i mean probably what has happened is you know accelerated by a pandemic and then all the digital transformation that has happened and fueled by social media as well i think people have gone so accustomed to a virtual lifestyle that they believe everything can be done virtually or in a hybrid uh, manner i guess that that has probably triggered a thing that okay what's what's the role of frontline workers per se the people on the field know how wrong that thinking is and why because frontline workers are are the key to customer experience they are the one who are engaging with your customers daily they are actually the one who are playing significant role in creating brand for your firm so anybody who thinks that you know okay now everything can be done hybrid or remotely or or in a virtual manner cannot be more wrong i think uh, frontline workers were and they will continue to be important having said that i think their role and their requirements have changed over a period of time and especially fueled by the pandemic but at at the same time uh, fueled by amazing and unbelievable technologies that are our that are at our disposal uh, that are at our disposal today and we will have uh, drew and rakshit talk about it but if you see in general right i mean there are i think more than double if not more a uh, number of frontline workers compared to desk based workers and if you if you go to specific industries let's say a retail industry or healthcare hospitality and so on so there are so many of these workers doing doing different type of work and at the same time if you see pretty much all the enterprises that we work with one of the key goals that they have is okay how do i improve productivity at an enterprise level and given the fact that you, are, you know these frontline workers form such a major chunk of this workforce without enhancing productivity of these workers enterprises cannot move ahead in fact in our research we found that almost uh, two in three uh, enterprises said that improving productivity is a key mandate that they have and given whatever is happening in the macro environment i think some of these things tie together uh this group specifically has witnessed lot of attrition over a period of time and as you see on this page uh, you know uh, there were like 11 million vacancies mostly in the in the front line in us alone and this specific group and if i may call them a persona one is they have a very specific need they are they are always on the run they are not desk based worker their uh, their qualifications are different their their technical skills are different the way the way they work with enterprises the way they the way they are seen by by their enterprise leaders compared to corporate workers is a bit different so all of this combined not only create a 
a very interesting puzzle to solve for. On one hand, these workers need to continue continuously show their value to the organization despite being so core. On, and on the other hand, generally we have seen, and I think Rakshid and Ru are going to talk about it. They haven't had a fair share of all the technology transformation that have happened. So uh, in this, we are going to dig dig deep in it and then and then try to find out okay what are some of the reasons and then why this should not happen and and how enterprises can leverage a lot of technology solutions at disposal disposal to drive transformation for uh, their frontline workers. Uh, if you move on, you know. Uh, there are of course a lot of a uh, lot of things for a uh, for a frontline worker right from a from a human resource let's say perspective you have which type of people you are hiring what what type of learning and development program you have policies company but i'm not going there i'm i'm specifically focused on okay what's the role of the workplace environment that they work in i think that becomes critical assuming that some of those other aspects around policy compensation and all are taken care of a lot of the times we have seen that frontline workers prefer to work in an enterprise which can give them the necessary tools which are needed. And that's where workplace technologies become so critical. One, given the fact, as I said earlier, these people are always on the move. They, they, they work across different regions, different locations. So they need that kind of an access, you know, anywhere, anytime. And law and a lot of the solutions have have come up to enable this. Uh, the support for them are is is uberized as we as we call it over a period of time. There have been a lot of investments in uh, AI led solutions to support this this group. That okay, you can you can help this group remotely rather than sending a service agent directly to work with them, which has which has improved their life. Last but not the least is the personalization. Now, despite the fact that we probably treat them as a as a persona, but even within that, different different individuals have different requirements. I mean, if you take a re a retail store, a frontline worker who is on the cash cash counter versus a frontline worker who is managing inventory versus a worker who is managing the alleys. So there are so many, and all of them have different needs. So in in theory, they are one persona, but in practicality, they are not. With that, let me invite my uh, esteemed co-panelist uh, Rakshit and Drew. And 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 as I said, I'm I'm going to be your voice, and I'm going to ask them uh, ask them some some questions on. Uh, so if you move forward. Uh, now, Rachit, if I if I may ask you to let's say take, you know, two of these. I know we talked about the critical role of frontline workers, but if if you can explain a bit more on, you know, what's the what's the vital role these uh, these frontline workers uh, play, and then why, unfortunately, despite all the in investments that have gone in the digital transformation, workplace transformations, we see that this specific group has not got its due. Rakshad. Hey, thanks, Yugal. Uh, so yes, this is, an, uh, this is an interesting webinar, right? I mean, I cannot uh, undermine the importance of a um, frontline worker. Uh, so, you know, before we get into uh, even the vital role of a frontline worker, right? I mean, let's first understand what is the difference between a frontline worker and an office worker, right? So typically, if you see frontline worker, uh, they are more the consumer of the information versus an information worker, which is more of a you know curator and creator of the information, right? And generally, in uh, you know frontline worker, they generally work. Um, uh, they are very mobile. Uh, they have to be on their feet, and they have to actually work on a task, right? I mean, they generally work on a task, uh, and they generally work directly with the customer. And even if you see what kind of devices they use compared to an information worker, which typically relies on a you know desktop, laptop, or a PC, which is, has been provided by the company, which is majorly you know company owned. Uh, in case of a frontline worker, you actually um, have a different set of gear altogether, right? You have complex machinery. 
you have specialized uh, headsets or you can use uh, uh, POS devices, tail devices, uh, ruggedized devices. So there are different, different form factors, different, different ways in which frontline worker need to engage with their end customer and do a particular job. Uh, so, you know, if you see from our perspective, what we are seeing is, uh, you know, uh, across the industry, frontline workers, they are getting ignored. Uh, in the last two or three years, there has been a lot of development uh, during the COVID, where everybody focused on bringing best of the technology for the home workers as well as for the uh, workers which are operating from the offices. But somehow this uh, uh, this important persona, which is the frontline worker, they uh, uh, couldn't uh, get the same share or the fair share of the technology. And uh, that is one uh, you know technology gap which we are clearly seeing in the industry. So the major reason for the exclusion uh, one, I think, you know, uh, most of the organizations, uh, they feel that these kind of users are more mostly on the field. And when they are working in the corporate offices, they have been focusing more on the information worker. And um, uh, and then because of the COVID, uh, the intent was to bring everybody uh, immediately, uh, you know, uh, effective in their business role. They started investing more on the information worker side. And somehow uh, there is a technology gap now which exists between uh, the kind of technology which is available for the frontline worker versus the kind of technology which is available for the information worker and that is a big opportunity that is a big area where we need to fill the gap and we need to see how we can make this important persona within an enterprise most effective and connected with the workplace strategy so that's that's some of the pointers which uh, yugal i have there no absolutely and i think uh, you know this resonate so well because I remember <clears throat> reading somewhere that most of the execs spend I think like three percent or less of their time with frontline workers which is considerably lower compared to what they do with and and as we said you know out of sight out of mind so this this group has probably not got the the due that they need and and the and the support that they need, which which is unfortunate, but but I guess things are changing, uh, and and I think we will we sort of further drill down on this going going forward. But if I may just ask uh, Ryu to comment on Ryu from from your vantage point, uh, the work that uh, uh, Zebra is doing on you know, what do you think are the consequences of doing it? That is one, of course, and then why suddenly a lot of people are talking about this? I mean, wh wh what has triggered enterprises to think, okay, no, we have worked a lot on workplace transformation on the corporate side, but there is a big piece of uh, workers that we have on frontline, which we have not really focused on. Yeah, yeah, great question, great topic. I mean, one, obviously we're very passionate about, right? I mean, we're a 55 year old company that's been focused on the frontline worker for uh, for over five decades, right? Moving on to six. And I, I think it's an important thing to kind of understand a little bit of the context, right? And I think, you know, before uh, the pandemic hit with COVID, you know, from a global perspective, really folks were really focused on driving inventory accuracy and visibility around those different items that really moved around the supply chain. And I think Rack should really said it well, which is, you know, these are the folks that make our global economy go around. There's not a package that's not delivered without these folks. There's not a Uber Eats, you know, to your dorm room that gets delivered that you're going to have a meal around. None of these things occur without frontline workers, right? Um, all the way from the manufacturing of the good to the packaging of the good to the delivery of the good, and even the return of the good, right? From a reverse logistics perspective, there's so many things from a circular economy that that the frontline worker is really kind of the lubrication around from a global perspective. So as we kind of looked at when 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 COVID and in the pandemic hit, you know, people really moved off of inventory to really two different things. Number one is worker safety and getting them back to work, right? Um, which involved uh, just getting physically people back with social distancing, right? If anybody remembers social distancing, I know we try to put it out of our heads right now, but you know, that's six feet, right? Which we don't think about, you know, uh, consciously today, that's a big thing with getting people back to work. So you got to think about location, you got to think about, you know, communication and to rack shit and, and your point, which is, you know, communication and collaboration is something that technology can help deliver right from a mobility perspective to really bring that connective tissue to it as well 
And so during COVID, you know, there it was really interesting because we just did a vision study for for retail last year, and 80% of the associates uh, surveyed in the survey agreed that you know employees who leverage technology and mobile devices really helped attract and retain more talent. So you also have to think about it from a retention and attraction point of view from a talent perspective, because as we know, the labor market is very constrained, right? So as we came out of COVID, everybody was hiring and getting people back to work. So now you have to think about, all right, now that I have these new folks entering my workforce, I think another challenge with the omission of technology and not delivering that to the workers is one, the ability to, to attract the top talent, Number two is once you do get the talent, is retaining it. And I think, you know, providing that digital experience, right, where, where, where folks, you know, as you have a frontline worker, you, you now can help transfer them by delivering the mobility into a knowledge worker. And I think that's kind of the, the, the new era that we're on. So we kind of went from moving people back into securely and working in the workforce to now really looking at, you know, from a perspective of how am I going to provide a better worker experience? to Ratchet's point, which is going to provide a better customer experience that those workers are going to be able to deliver. And I think, you know, by excluding them over the last period of time in this digital transformation, it has brought the inability to really focus on the worker experience, but also heighten that customer experience. So I think those are the two two different parts that have really kind of delved uh, into an, into a, an opportunity uh, for us to partner together to help deliver that digital transformation for that frontline worker. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. So just to just to summarize, so I so I guess both Rakshit and you are talking about okay, how the experience of these frontline workers directly impact, of course, the experience of the of of the customer. And at the same time, uh, over a period of years, enterprises probably have not focused on transforming their experience. And then now I think we are seeing in it's some geographies such as US and all where there are a lot of workers on strike in healthcare uh manufacturing and all so i guess some some of those problems are are coming up and and probably they will they will these will accelerate some of these uh, transformation initiatives uh where in enterprises are going to focus on okay what what the front that they need to put frontline workers in the center of their workplace transformation strategy uh if you move forward now as I said, I think we are going to probably um, dig a bit bit more on this, uh, Rakshit and Ru. I know you have spoken about it already, but where where en enterprises have taken workplace transformation initiatives and then somehow neglected, what what were some of the reasons? If you can, I don't think they may deliberately do it. It's just that probably there's a cost issue around it. There's lack of focus. There's a lack of technology. They believe that is overwhelming. Corporate workers are working in specific areas, so it's easy to do workplace transformation there. Frontline workers are spread across to Drew's point, so it is challenging. There are so many of them, different type of personas. And what in your experience you have seen that once they have omitted that, some of the consequences Drew also talked about, there's a lot of it. it attrition happening, everybody started to hire, so retention became a challenge and so on. And if you can give example of specific industry, you know, could be, let's say, I think you talked about retail vision, but retail could be one, healthcare could be another, maybe hospitality as well. So I'll just I'll just uh, pose this question first, Rakshit, to you, and then maybe to Drew. Sure, sure, Shukal. So, so Yugal, I think possibly I'll take first couple of them. So, um, you know, the key workplace transformation where frontline workers have been neglected, right? I mean, so let me address why these employees have been largely ignored for the digital transformation, right? So the first key point which comes to my mind is, you know, the cost value analytics, right? I mean, so many a times when you have to invest a new tech into a new technology, right? And like you rightly said, Yugal, uh, frontline workers are almost twice the size of the information worker, right? So having the right kind of a ROI attached to those investments is little difficult, right? Because we discussed, right? I mean, these people are little away from the corporate office. They are in the local side. They are doing the job, right? So how do we have a very firm business case around some of the technology investments 
so that you know uh, we can make their world as interesting and as encompassing as it is there for an information worker is some is a big challenge right i mean how do you justify the business case um, uh, for the investment and if it is the use case around having the better communication and collaboration how do you go about doing that so that is the first challenge which is there the second one which comes to my mind is the complexity one right i mean because you know uh, if you see the world of an information worker is more it oriented and the world of an operational uh, uh, of the uh, frontline worker is more ot oriented which is the operational technology oriented so the complexity of the application the complexity of the devices which they are handling is very very different so bringing it all together right where somebody is doing a task focused work for the end customer and then having a very strong business case attached to it is one of the biggest challenge right which we have seen and then also we have to keep in mind that the comparative literacy level of these employees as compared to information worker is also on the lower side and hence you know there is a lot of need uh, to engage with the uh, uh, end user understand their expectation and then invest into any kind of a workplace transformation initiative and sometimes you know when you are trying to roll up a new technology that's where the misses are there right i mean so that is on um, the workplace transformation how uh, why these people are left behind and what could be the potential reason why technology is not delivering the same results for them and uh, why is it happening the other part is what are the consequences of the uh, omission i think uh, yugal i'll take uh, uh, the few inputs from the slide which you initially showed uh, the impact of these omissions are beyond just productivity so productivity is only one aspect the biggest impact is on you know these employees will feel disconnected from the organization they will they actually are relying more on their coworkers right on any kind of a support which is needed than uh, understanding the importance of the wider wider culture of an organization and hence you know these omission can have a very high turnover rate for an enterprise they can lose uh, these people very easily and um, uh, technology is one of the key reason beyond salaries uh, and the work environment which has been cited by these employees as the reason to stick to a particular organization so uh, these are some of the uh, you know uh, 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 impact or the consequences which could be there of a poor experience which an organization is delivering for a frontline worker mm -hmm. uh do your thoughts yeah do yeah i th i think rakshat makes some really good points there and I, I think you know just to kind of double click on one area I, I think you know he talks about complexity and looking at you know the different areas you know every single time we talked in, in vertical agnostic whether it's manufacturing healthcare transportation logistics retail you know it really comes on to prioritization right and then it goes down to what we were talking about before which is you know all of a sudden there's a pandemic that hit that that no one was prepared for right we were right in the middle of transformation in its own right depending upon what vertical you're in what what the focus was on it and people really turned to just getting people to return to work right safely and then they looked at hey how do i just get stuff into stores so that people can buy it and one of those biggest components right and i'm sure that everybody on the phone experience which is toilet paper shortage right and if you think about all the different frontline workers that touched toilet paper during the pandemic it was a massive amount but at the end of the day the prioritization was just getting goods into people's hands so that they could go about their daily activities return people back to work and then you kind of came out of it in 21 22 and then last year and now people are really looking at all right, now that we've kind of stabilized and we've looked at the different areas that we haven't invested in from a gap perspective, just like Rakshad has just, just summarized very eloquently, you look at those different things. Now you look at the opportunities, right? So the, the fact that there were some, some populations, including the frontline workers, that were excluded in investments because of prioritization are now opportunities to really drive that transformation. I think some of those areas, you know, from an opportunity perspective, really look around, you know, healthcare, right? How do I digitize that that operation and really drive communication and collaboration through a common platform, you know, from a device so that those folks can really provide a better bedside and patient experience at the end of the day so that I can drive that communication, but also so that, you know, based upon personas, just like Ratchet talked about, which is, hey, the doctors can spend more time, you know, developing a, a, an excellent uh, pathway of care 
the, the nurses and charge nurses and the different division nurses can now develop that care path and spend more time at the patient base because I've now digitized that operation. So you can think about, you know, how that's going to happen, but, you know, those were put on pause because of prioritization, right, which was really around worker safety, getting back to work. So you can think we're kind of living in these eras of time, right, periods of investment and in digital transformation. And I think as you think about that fast forward, we can already see it in the retail space, right? I mean, with the labor shortages, we've seen an augmentation of the footprint. And I, you know, show of hands, even though we're all virtual right now, that have ever done a self checkout, right? So now we we've actually converted ourselves into the labor through technology, and that's being delivered. So now that you know, now that the associate labor pool is smaller, right, from a retention standpoint, we now got to give them the tool sets such as mobility for communication and collaboration, so that. If Rakshit's going through, you know, the local Tesco in London and he's doing a, a checkout at lunchtime of a sandwich and chips and, you know, a tea, you know, and he has a problem at the self-checkout, we got to make sure that one, that there's not a long period of time for, for Rakshit to sit there and have that checkout experience, but that there's a notification digitally to a to a to an associate saying, hey, we have a customer that's in lane four of self-checkout who is need some help. So that assistance comes over in near real time through a mobile device, through a notification to that associate who's well informed because they have data at the, the footprint saying, all right, oh, I see what Ratchet's problem is. He didn't, he didn't properly scan the potato chips. I know he meant to, but he didn't scan the potato chips. So I'm going to go over there. I'm going to help him press the button and then it defrictionizes. So one, you've now put the mobility into the worker's hand so that they can help Ratchet have a better heightened experience when there is a challenge, but also Ratchet has now transformed the footprint of that store by being part of that labor pool. So if you can think about the opportunities from these folks that have been admitted over the last few years, you know, it's really transforming those different environments in, in positive ways. And I think we just got to be very creative on how we're going to help prioritize and deliver that technology to both heighten that customer experience, but also the associate experience from a frontline worker perspective. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think uh, Rakshit may be feeling hungry now, but but I guess these are, uh, but, but these are very valuable insights. And I think it is almost, uh, you know, you earlier also talked about it. It's almost paradoxical how some of these glitches are interesting, right? Because this tells in day to day, even in an information life, when you have this, think about frontline worker that are doing such critical tasks. You know, and as I was saying, it is almost paradoxical that virtual experience are going to drive more frontline worker uh, workforce transformation because how do you deliver things in two days, three days, one hour, two hour, right? There is a frontline worker who is doing it. So some of those things are critical. Now, uh, I guess uh, we we touched upon this a bit that keeping other things aside, right? The policies, the compensation, the hiring and so on. But Let's just let's just uh, focus a bit on you know sheer technology around the hardware, software, services that are there. And Rakshit, you also talked about how driving some of this change may not be that that easy. So I would want to have both of you comment on this. Okay, do you see that? Uh, yes, we keep talking about okay, this this group has probably been neglected, but but is there some sort of blame to be shared as well? Do you see? frontline workforce less open to change compared to information workforce or or that's a myth if we can if we can talk about it and then we will get into okay what's the what's the role of uh, good hardware services and a holistic workplace uh, offering from a frontline worker perspective Sure, sure, you will. So you will a couple of points. I mean, so to your point, and at least this is my view, right? I mean, are frontline workers more uh, uh, resistant to change as compared to other? I'll say the blame has to be shared both ways. I think for even the enterprises have not done enough to empower and provide right for purpose solution to the frontline workers, right? And that is the reason they have actually been relying more on their co-workers as well as, you know, 
the information which is outside available in the uh, 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 internet, uh, uh, following the non-standard security policies, because they are actually looking for that support, which unfortunately, because they are out of sight and out of mind for an organization, and uh, that is the reason uh, you know uh, uh, they are not getting the right level of support uh, uh, from an enterprise right i mean so that is my view obviously change management requires a different aspect uh, altogether when it comes for the uh, frontline worker uh, unlike information worker we are which are you know all uh, very uh, familiar with the newer technology which are very well uh, 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 you know literate uh, the frontline worker needs some support, right? I mean, they, they really need much more customized and personalized change management program uh, so that they can deliver the best of the result and they can take the best advantage of the technology. And, you know, I have also gone through some of the reports, Yugal, which you did earlier and with the conversations which we had earlier uh, with Drew. Uh, tech, frontline workers are very keen in embracing new technology. So they understand that technology can actually simplify their business role. It can help reduce the mental stress. It can help create that bandwidth and that uh, challenge of, uh, of fatigue which they are facing in their business role. So they look up to technology as a savior, right? Uh, so typically when we get into any kind of a digital workplace uh, conversation with our end customer, we generally suggest to take a five pronged approach uh, around having and delivering an equitable workplace experience for all the workers within the enterprise, be it frontline or an information worker. The first step always is to create a cross functional team where we believe that, you know, uh, workplace for all is not just a CIO agenda. We need to have all the C-level stakeholders participate, uh, be it CHRO, be it CDO, uh, be it even legal teams, because you know if frontline workers are working, uh, and generally they work outside nine by five kind of a shift, right? So what will be the impact of uh, them working uh, outside their normal shifting uh, shift routine? Uh, so you know there is a lot of effort which requires to bring a cross-functional team coming together and thinking about uh, that we need to solve a challenge within an enterprise which is going to improve the brand uh, uh, awareness of their company within, within the uh, uh, larger world. So that is the first step where you bring everyone together. The second step is to you know, understand the unique needs, right? I mean, if you see traditionally, frontline workers' needs have never been communicated well, and they have not been even understood well from an IT perspective. So we need to have a very focused conversation around understanding what kind of devices these users are using, what are their user journeys, what really matter to them in their day-to-day -day business role, and how we can, how an organization can provide a superlative experience on top of it. So that is a very second critical step where you need to expand your persona definition beyond information workers, which is mobile workers, power workers, you know, task workers and all, to include for frontline worker as a critical profile in, in your persona conversation. The third step, which is also very important, is to uh, you know uh, utilize the new technology which is available in the industry uh, for any kind of a frontline worker job. Uh, we see that many of our customers they are embracing technologies like Gen AI, uh, Metaverse, uh, to uh, empower and simplify the life of a frontline worker. So for example, if they are working on um, a machinery, they are doing a maintenance of that. So can a Gen AI bot in the real time tell them what they are supposed to do and can also predictively tell that, hey, the problem is here and you need to do these five steps, right? And they can become their kind of a companion to provide any kind of a support in a real time uh, 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 on, on that particular equipment. So that is one. And then similarly on Metaverse, we have customers like Falk, which are actually trade, you know, uh, training their uh, frontline staff, the uh, van staff and everyone on the medical kits, which are there in the ambulances uh, to see that how they can, uh, because these kits keep changing, right? I mean, so it's the most critical job of a van person and the front, uh, the, uh, the person who is there in those ambulances to provide uh, mission critical support to the patient. So they need to be aware of, what is kept where in the uh, van. Uh, so all those things need to be uh, automated and made uh, uh, easily available to the uh, frontline workers in the digital work world. So that is the second, third step where you utilize the latest and greatest technology which is there. 
The fourth step is uh, Yugal, you brought it up earlier, right? I mean, the change management part. Uh, this persona requires much more deeper support, right? I mean, so they they need a lot of training, they need a lot of uh, hand holding, they need a lot of support to improve their util, uh, digital dexterity, right? I mean, to improve how they can actually utilize the new technology. And these trainings cannot be just the virtual ones. At times they have to be on the job, at times they have to be in classroom, so you know they can take the best advantage of uh, the technology and at the same time uh, they are fully feeling uh, uh, confident in their business role and they can like the workplace which an IT uh, or you know the uh, organization has provisioned for them and the last step is to have a voice of uh, you know the frontline workers the voice of employees that's what we call it generally uh, 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 included in any kind of a conversation uh, from our own research we feel that when we capture voice of employees, we traditionally leave frontline workers, right? I mean, so it's very important to establish that bi-directional flow of uh, uh, communication, uh, to hear them, to understand their pain points, and then constantly evolve um, uh, our solution stack, our capability stack to meet their unique business problems. So I think these are the five critical I feel are very important uh, for an organization uh, to reduce the burden uh, which are faced by which is faced by the frontline workers. <laughs> great points, Drew. Yeah, re really good points. I just uh, you know processing all the great information that Rach just talked about. And I think you know as you as you kind of think about that step process, you know thinking about the context behind it, right? I mean, you know, I have a lot of empathy for for both sides of the audience, right? The frontline worker and then those folks that are trying to you know, make the best decisions around what technology to prioritize. And I have empathy for both, right? Because I think Ratchet says it best, which is you've got uh, a labor pool, which is coming in um, to, to, to be asked every single day to do more with less, right? And technology is kind of a conduit to help with that. And then you've got the other folks, you know, the the the, the folks that are in the co corporate office, you know, trying to figure out, hey, where where do I take my budget spend, right? How, how, how do I prioritize that from that perspective? So empathy for both of that. And then I also think that as you look at, um, you know, kind of what Rax should just talk about, which are these new technologies that are coming out. And the reason why they're coming out is because the explosive nature of data, right? And we've been in this data journey that's been tapped in by mo mobility, you know, with, you know, different modalities such as this that you can, you know, grab from your pocket and do your everyday work with. But now we've been so used to that and it's really been kind of a, what a sequence evolution around data, right? Whereas before you would just have data that you could, you know, reflect upon, you would schedule a monthly meeting on, you know, with your frontline workers and your, your corporate workers, and you would say, all right, this is what happened, right? This is what happened in the month of December in 2023. Let's talk about it and let's take some actions. And in six weeks, let's have another update, right? Well, that's what the way we used to work, right? And now you can say, hey, then we had a lot of different insights that used to come from that, from that perspective. And, you know, then we could actually, you know, move in from monthly meetings to really just updates saying, hey, you know, here's what it means, right? So then we don't need the six week update to figure out what it meant. We now have the monthly meeting and say, all right, now we're coming in to, to understand what it meant. Here's some trends. Now, as you kind of think about that fast forwarding, you know, now we're getting into to this, you know, kind of AI, you know, kind of intelligence later that Rack shit was just talking about. And I think that as you think about, you know, this is kind of a, a node in your everyday working life saying, now that I have the information and I can digitally empower workers to do this, now I can deliver information, but I don't want to deliver too much information because then I have cognitive fatigue. So now I bring in a, an intelligence layer, you know, with artificial intelligence that's very purposeful to bring a task orientation that's optimized to Ratchet's point to the worker in the environment that's going to say, here's what you could do next based upon your role, based upon your environment, based upon whether you're in manufacturing, healthcare, retail, transportation, logistics, whatever it may be, here's what you could do next. So then now I have a choice as a worker. And now as you think about that, now we've evolved into a prescriptive nature saying, hey, here's what you should do. So with an accuracy of 76, 86 percent, rack shit, as you go into your warehouse environment and you start your day, this is what you should do first with a high level of confidence based upon 
all the different data, the different workflows that we've analyzed, this is what you should do. And what's interesting about that is that if you think about one of the number one things that everybody's thinking about, no matter what vertical you're sitting in, is the labor pool, right? And how to optimize it. Now that I can bring that knowledge to the worker and I can bring a path to competency, right? And the path to competency is really where the investment in labor is critical because one is you can do more with less. You can get people up to speed, whether they're a full-time worker or seasonal worker, and you can deliver that intelligence so they can tap into it and feel good about their engagement and their delivering of what that work is to them and how they're performing from day one to day 37 to day 100 to day 356. And they can feel good about that. So I think, you know, now that you think about how can I, one, bring a modality such as a mobile device to each worker, how can I bring the information they need in their specific role at the specific right time, right place in real time to help them co-pilot that frontline worker into a knowledge worker to bring that path of competency up? And I think that is the comp that's the error that we're in right now, really tapping into that. People are used to it. Right now, we're 11 months away from 60% of the workforce that are going to be Gen Z and millennials, which is just mind blowing to me as a Gen Xer, right? Because, you know, not speaking for, for you, you all are, are a rack shit, but I'm, I'm a digital adopter, right? I'm a Gen Xer. I'm not going to ask anybody's age, but these folks are digitally natives. I, I, I feel like I'm a very competent technologist. However, my eight year old, my 12 year old, they just get it. Right, they're native from the start. They came <laughs> out walking. They were they were picking up devices before they even standing. You know, these folks are digitally native, so we're going to have to deliver a digital transformation for this large group. And by the way, that's happening in eleven months. Sixty percent of the workforce is going to be Gen Z and millennials. Boom. So <laughs> we have to think about how we're going to deliver this together, and we're going to have to do it quickly because. Right now, on average, a, a worker during their daily basis has seven to 800 digital interactions per day. By next year, because of that native population, but also the explosion and the ubiquitous of this, they're going to have five to 6,000 digital interactions per day. So moving from seven to 800 to five to 6,000 is crazy to me. So we have to think about one, fatigue from a cognitive perspective, but also what is the information they're going to need to get to that path of competency and the level of engagement to retain them, to really help them come into the organization, ramp them up, but also retain the talent and attract the talent. So I think those are different conduits that I think that we can all work together with bringing this digital information and transformation to them, but helping them prioritize it because the workforce is getting demanded because they're used to it. From the time they were born to the time they want to work, no matter what vertical you're in, they're going to want it. And if you don't have it, they're probably going to go to a different uh, employer brand of choice. Yeah, fascinating, fascinating. So just to summarize what we discussed in the last 40 minutes or so, and then I'll hand over for, to Parag for take any questions and then uh, closing comments. No one is, uh, of course, frontline workers are extremely critical and um, an important part of the puzzle. There are technologies available now to make their life easier and more productive. Uh, maybe there's a different way to drive that change management, uh, but then it has to happen. Given what is happening in the labor market, uh, cost of everything is going up. Every, everyone is trying to optimize and then prioritize. So enterprises have their hands full. And last but not the least, uh, Drew, the point that you made, you know, the change in the type of this, uh, the workforce in general, but including frontline as well, which are which which would natively get technology to Rakshit's point earlier. Maybe it will become easier to drive change management there because they they will in fact demand lot of lot more from their uh, from their em, uh, employer. Otherwise, they will look for somewhere else and then hiring frontline workers is extremely expensive as uh, you know a lot of research suggests 15 to 20 thousand uh, dollars go to hire per per uh, frontline worker so i guess there are a lot of things need to come together to make this initiative a, a success where technology services 
software but beyond that people have to play a critical part so that you know everybody is getting the experience that they need and then serving the end clients so i'll just pause here and then uh, hand it back to parag for any questions that we might have received and then any closing comment from uh, his end parag over to you sure thank you jugal uh, for moderating this session thank you rakshit and you for uh, helping us with the thought process uh, in Q&A, I think we are having a question for Drew. <clears throat> Security is among the leading priorities for enterprises in the post-pandemic world. Can you please put some light on the security aspects of the Zebra solutions that we are talking about? Yeah, that's that's an excellent question. And you know, um, security should be your first thought, your middle thought, and your last thought. Uh, that's flat out. I mean, you know, I I think that. It's interesting, you know, coming from an IoT background myself, you know, uh, a lot of startups and solutions, uh, you know, both from a privacy and data perspective, don't think about security. And, you know, I think, that, again, it has to be your constant thought, both in your ideation cycles, your design cycles, your product management cycles, and then from a data integrity and privacy perspective. So I think security is, a, is something that needs to be multi-layered um, at Zebra. We take that extremely seriously. We look at that in, in all the product design and deployment cycles that we have, um, you know, as an example with Android, uh, with Google, which we help bring that into the enterprise space and have over 60% market share today. In our mobility DNA extensions, we've actually written out security packets to extend the security umbrella around our device portfolio uh, from an Android perspective. And we also carry forward that that lineage of security across all of our product and portfolio. So we want to make sure that one, that that is secure from an IoT node perspective, uh, if it's a if it's a mobile device, if it's data, we want to make sure that, you know, from a, a, a business um, transport layer, that those are secure from a different cloud providers as 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 we've seen a huge ubiquitous transformation from on prem to cloud in most environments today. And if it's an on on prem instance and hybrid into cloud, we want to make sure that there's security measures in the transportation of that data. So all around, just to reiterate, security should be your first thought, your middle thought, and your last thought. Thank you, Drew, for your uh, inputs. Uh, the next question, uh, uh, I would request Rakshit to help us with answers. How are HCL Tech and Jebra working together to modernize the frontline worker experience and their collaboration with the wider organizations? Okay, thanks, Parag. Um, so I think both Zebra and HCL Tech are the leaders in their own space, right? I mean, uh, Zebra is helping us provide intelligent edge solutions as well as the intelligent devices uh, for the frontline workers. And you know, HCL Tech is the leaders in the uh, providing end-to-end -end consulting system integration and managed services for the IT and OT needs of every enterprise uh, uh, on the uh, digital workplace side, right? So both these companies have come together and we have created a very comprehensive uh, digital solution uh, which combines hardware, software, and services through which we can solve any kind of a frontline worker problem, right? So we we realize that you know frontline worker environment is very heavily manual uh, and inefficient. Uh, so with the help of our end-to-end -end stack, we can manage those expectations very well. We can do a end-to-end -end, uh, experience consulting for the customer to understand their frontline worker pain points and then start digitizing those process and make it easier uh, with the help of our solution for an enterprise to attract and retain best of the frontline talent uh, which is available in the industry uh, so uh, uh, that's how these two work companies are coming together thank you rakshit for addressing these questions um with this we have uh, come to end of the q a so thank you drew rakshit and you guys for sharing your valuable insights on frontline uh, workers. We hope all the participants have benefited from this discussion. For the further queries, please write to us at contact.dwp.hcl.com. We have two QR codes here. One, uh, the left side QR codes is a thought leadership uh, blog on the frontline workforce. You can scan and have some input. For the 
right side QR code, we have our DTRP services. Please scan it and visit us for the further uh, inputs. Thank you. We look forward to you. Host you again. Have a great time. Mm -hmm.